I am going to just round robin through the talks and see through the speakers and see how many we can cover. So regarding the first talk, Tresha, we have a first question from Enrique. Does the security threshold apply to the described attacks only? Are there any results showing if these attacks are the most powerful that can be? Yes, our uh, security analysis applies to all possible attacks. So uh, it's a formal and full security analysis. And it's just we also show that security analysis and the security threshold is also tight, which means that we can identify the worst case attack, attack that is the unsplit attack I mentioned in the talk. All right, thank you. Now, uh, Alberto, I realize you already answered this in Slack, but for the benefit of people watching the recording after, uh, does this distinction between owned and shared objects help to boot the execution of transactions? Oh, I did we was Alberto? I think so. All right. So let me jump to Nunu, sorry. I broke my flow. All right, fantastic. Uh, no, no. Is there a back pressure mechanism between modules to paste down modules that are consistent with faster? Um, yes, the the implementation of channels that we use to communicate between uh, modules is synchronous. So and is bounded. So whenever a channel reaches full capacity, it will block uh, new messages from entering and therefore slow down any modules that are. Uh, actively moving faster than the modules ahead of it in the pipeline. All right, fantastic. Uh, sorry, I just need you. Trying to reach Alberto again. <laughs> I just got completely. All right, so <laughs> sorry. Back to back to special and PowerCoin security. Uh, for the security threshold, sorry, this is a question from Nikita. Uh, for the security threshold, one needs to take care of only the expected number of honestly generated blocks per epoch, or the or does the actual distribution matter? Uh, yes, I think uh, our uh, analysis is quite robust to the the distribution. So, uh, but actually, like uh, currently in Filecoin, the mining process follows a uh, Poisson distribution. So this gives our the result shown in the paper and in the slides. So basically, the the, the value like one minus e to the power of something is the probability of like the Poisson distribution, a, a Poisson random variable being like non-zero. But if we we change to another uh, a random variable like another distribution like the binomial, the expectation will change a little bit. So we are also but the the same method and the same technique will be able to to derive the the security threshold. We always compare like the expected number of honest nodes with the like the expected number of like malicious uh, blocks. Okay, and Alberto is back with us. Uh, I was saying, Alberto, I, I realize you've you've uh, already answered uh, some of the questions in, in Swag, but for the benefit of people watching the recording after, we'll we'll still ask them here. So, question from Sergey. Uh, does this distinction between owned and shared objects help to boost the execution of transactions? Yes, completely. So every time we can handle a transaction that only contains own objects, they can immediately get executed in their own task. So potentially their own thread and uh, with no interdependency between each other. While when we go through the consensus path, there is a more complex uh, distributed uh, parallel execution engine that needs to happen because of various read write dependencies uh, you can find all of that in the paper. Okay, and I will, well, I'll ask you a second question to catch up. So Chris has a question uh, on why consensus is only when, need, when needed. Uh, so what is the overhead of consensus over the consensus bus path that justifies separating the two and making the system more complex? I, I will just add to the question. I mean, uh, Sui, uh, Sui is is live now. So, do you have any sort of uh, measurement of the the transaction pattern and and what the practical impact is uh, in in the real world? Yeah. So it's latency. Latency is the big difference. In the best of laboratory experiments, we never get consensus latency lower than two seconds. In practice, it's more than two seconds, five, ten, something in that area. 
while we manage to get every transaction that does not use consensus sublet sub second. So in less than a second, the transaction gets finalized. That's the key benefit. All right, and uh, Nunu, uh, I, I saw you mentioned uh, Mir BFT in your talk when, when talking about uh, other uh, BFT protocols, but given that you're presenting like the two prongs of, of your work, so both the, the, the Atlas framework and the actual FEBFT implementation, uh, did you uh, look into the, into the Mir framework as well, and how, how would you compare them, or how do they compare, I, I guess, beyond the, the obvious Go versus Rust split? I think you're I didn't really okay. yes. um, look a lot into the MIR uh, framework, uh, but I, um, about the choice between Go and Rust, I mean, we can make arguments for both sides, but I think uh, our choice of going with Rust was mostly due to the lack of garbage collector, which can sometimes um, uh, not really ruin performance, but make performance unpredictable. So at some point, your system might have uh, worse performance, and we're not aware of why. And uh, having that garbage collector just adds another layer of, uh, of uh, I'm not sure, uh, I'm missing the word, of, uh, of overhead and of complexity that we have to take into account. As well as we believe that Rust, with its ownership system, uh, although it provides a much higher a uh, steeper learning curve. Um, we believe once people get uh, accustomed to it, they are able to produce software that is uh, much higher in quality and much less error prone since the compiler already helps you uh, figure out most of the most common bugs that are related to uh, memories, such as uses after freeze and other uh, regular uh, memory sharing issues. All right, so robustness it is. Uh, we have four minutes left, so I'll try to do another round uh, with the final questions we received. So, uh, uh, from Srivatsan, uh, it seems that the security threshold beta decreases with M. Is a larger value for M desired for better throughput? I think the bull shark protocol does not have this trade-off between security and throughput. How would you compare? Uh, yeah, yeah. For the for the first question on the throughput, I would say yes and no. I, I think currently today we still observe like many duplicate transactions in in Falcon blocks because those blocks are mined concurrently. But I think if combined with some like maybe, tra maybe transaction like sortition or transaction carrying, calorie like mechanism like different miners working on different set of transactions, then we can we will be able to see like an increase in throughput by using a large M. And uh, yeah, and for the second question uh, compared with Bushak, yes, I think indeed there is no security and the throughput trade off in Bushak because it's uh, like it's a quorum based uh, BFT SMR protocol. It always have a security threshold of one third, yeah, but it do have maybe do have some trade off in, in security and uh, in 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 throughput and then latency. Uh, and for that, maybe Alberto can confirm later. And but uh, comparing with Bushak, I think that like, Bushak is a permissioned uh, BFT protocol. It assumes a, a fixed uh, like a, a committee. And but for Filecoin, it's more similar to like are uh, the permission is consensus protocols like Bitcoin, Ouroboros, and the Ghost. So for uh, so. It suits better for like for a decentralized and permissionless storage based blockchain like like Filecoin. All right, brilliant. So last question for Alberto uh, for the consensus bus. Sorry, this is from Nikita again. For the consensus bus path and the last step, uh, are two third uh, effective signatures needed for finality or uh, larger than one third are sufficient? such that there is a guarantee that at least one honest validator includes the transaction in the block? So that's a very good question. So uh, we do require 12 plus one, so more than two thirds. The reason is because of the checkpoint and reconfiguration sub protocols that I did not have time to explain. Um, so in one sentence, um, ends of epoch can only happen 
upon receiving a signature from two thirds of the validators. A honest validator does not sign to end epoch if all the transactions it countersigned are not already processed and as part of a checkpoint. This means that if you wait for two third acknowledgement, you know that there is at least one honest authority that will not allow to end the epoch until its transaction gets processed. All right. And final question for Nunu. I mean, you, you mentioned in your in your closing slides some of the next steps for, for technical improvements to, to the framework and protocol. Uh, more broadly uh, and out of curiosity what are the next steps for the framework i mean what do you hope to to see being done with it uh our first next step is to maybe extract um the persistent storage engine from the consensus protocol into the actual framework to reduce yet again the burden of the developer and uh, but our final goal is to introduce uh, new ways of scaling uh, execution because we believe currently the ecosystem surrounding um, distributed network processing is very focused on non-latency sensitive applications so when we are actually talking about web3 and running and developing applications that are real time and that requ require at least sub-second latency uh, the current ordering protocols that are then based on blockchain do not meet the required criteria to actually provide uh, a good um, experience to people that are using systems as these to um, to run their applications. So our objective is to make something that keeps uh, latency down, as is. Uh, uh, normally in SMR protocols, which have much lower latency than uh, blockchain protocols. And at the same time, we want to introduce new scaling techniques so that we can open up the possibilities uh, uh, of our framework and of our protocols to be used in more diverse applications. 